Hello race fans, sim fans, RC fans, racing 393. So this is now uh, Schumacher LMP12 race preparation part two. So in the first part, just to recap, we were doing the tyres, turning down what we already had, um, chafing the edges a little bit, getting the uh, diameters more equal, Lots of feedback, it's all taken on board. Uh, a lot of it I've written down, so when the time comes, I can refer back to it. So just quickly what I've done so far, like I said, the tires, they're quite nice and thin now. They look a bit dirty here because I have run the car indoors. Uh, the coning of the front tires, I uh, common sense would prevail there. Uh, the, the, the sort of the the tire truer art uh, is it the arbitor whatever it's called i can't remember now but i have got one it doesn't fit i've got another one somewhere by fast tracks i think that might fit i've got to find it so i haven't got round to that yet that would probably stop the tires from coning i'm hoping so that's something i can look into uh, i've got to clean the tires properly um and get perhaps get some of the uh additive off or and i've got to seal the edges here i mean it is fairly sealed to be honest but whatever it is a little bit of glue around there won't hurt, hurt at all will it so that's that you can see by the front here i've changed the front bumper to the honeycomb one the new one that fits the eclipse 5. this is the new radio system got the sanwa receiver that's all in and stuck in and it's bound and it's all on i found i think i might have found the issue with the brakes if you don't even remember from back when i was doing my very first national event the esc had to be like reset and the guy at schumacher did that for me to get it into blinky mode and it, it wouldn't go into blinky mode for whatever reason but he did it but since doing that the brakes there was no brakes regardless of what setting i used because it reset the ESC. So I put everything back onto what I thought it was. And I spent quite a long time yesterday and it just would not work. There is a setting um, with the Hobby Wing programmable box, if you like. And there was a part in there, was a, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it basically, it, it seems obvious now, but it's just the amount of how much brake you want. I think it was down to something like 25%. Uh, I've put it up to 75.5, whatever the default is for that three quarters. Seems to work now, so I can't do it very quick indoors. But it it runs true, so in a straight line on my, on my floor through to the lounge. And when you break it, sort of slows down, which it wasn't doing at the BRCA. It, um, not, not, it was in the very first time I went out, because uh, it wasn't in blinky mode and the guy said it needs to be in blinky mode and someone said well it is his first race just I'm not going to come anywhere it doesn't matter the next job so before I get to that the other bits I have been doing is the weight car is overweight I've got some information here so as you know 730 grams is the weight limit for these things the chassis on its own as you see it there with the battery in it at 720 so there's a lot of weight there um i can reduce a few things uh firstly it costs money but the servo that's in there weighs 33 grams i have found one of a better servo at 28.6 grams as well lighter uh it's actually 4.4 grams lighter but at 120 pounds, so deeper pockets are needed. Um, but that's an option. The body shell that I currently have painted and messed about with 50 grams. Another shell, it's from Schumacher. It's not the one that everybody's using. Again, it's gonna get beaten about. I don't know if I'll use it yet. I might try and repair the one I've got. I just I'm gonna damage two bodies. Anyway, we'll call that shell two for now. Um, that's 42 grams, but unpainted, uncut as well. So you cut some the bits off, trim the body up, wheel arches, etc. It'll be a little bit lighter. And then with the paint that you put on it, it depends how much paint, 
depends what color I guess because at each layer of paint you put on it's gonna add grams isn't it and then I need to on both shells which uh, I need to strengthen the front up with some with some tape that you stick on and it just strengthens the front of the car a little bit but in doing so it's going to add weight so I'm not sure how and what I'm going to do yet but the car look it won't make a massive difference to me but something this small if you're going to be near the top end of things or the best you can be then getting the weight down to the minimum uh, is definitely needed I've seen some of the cars get weighed before they go out and some are right, are right on the money so just slightly over the sort of the minimum weight where mine's uh, quite a lot over isn't it so mine's sort of in excess of depends on which shell I use 40 grams over or 32 grams over if I use the other shell but that's just based on the fact that it's not painted or cut so I'm probably going to have to deep, dig deep and get that slightly better servo uh, it's got it is higher spec and it's lighter as far as the rest of the weight of the car I don't know yet it could be something like well and it, I mean the battery is the battery the motor is the motor I can't really change I know I can change it but it's, I don't particularly want to change that I know I can get a better servo speed control is fairly you know a lot of people are using those ones those hobby wings the wiring is the next one. So I'm going to show you the wiring at the moment. Let me just move my camera. So looking at the speed controller to the motor, uh, it's quite a lot of wiring. It's quite thick. Um, I've got similar sized wire, uh, but you can see the route I've taken goes underneath the center damper. There's quite a lot of excess, but I'm going to take the wires the other way. Now I'm in two minds. I think what I might do initially is unsolder the, the motor, cut them and, and route them from here round to here in a very um, conservative way, taking some of the weight out. Won't be a lot, a few grams here and there, one or two even will make a difference. And then I was going to redo these. They're okay, but they do stick up. Again, it's not a big, big issue. They'd be better if they were flat. It'd be better if this was slightly shorter. I might be able to do something with that. Like take this one off from here, cut it from this end and have a shorter um, as it goes in. So it sort of bends round here and keeps it shorter there. Just so it definitely can't reach over that side. Not that it does, but everyone's banging on about that but uh, yeah it, it could happen I get it but anyway yeah I might do that it's easy to get to there Look, it's right at the end and I won't have to solder any of these I would just have to reroute these here so that's the plan so that's what it's like at the moment I'm gonna take the battery out and unsolder the ends of the motor I'll have to make sure that I take note of which one goes where it's not difficult and then I'll be back. I'm not going to film the soldering because solder is solder, isn't it? If you're good at it, it's good. If you're shit at it, it's your shit. <laughs> but uh, I will remove the battery. Anyway, let me, um, there's a soldering iron, you know, standard stuff. On my wires, I always struggle, as like I said, with soldering. Don't know why. I personally think my main issue with the soldering is my soldering iron's not good enough. You need, without stating the obvious, you need a bloody hot iron. And I'm not sure mine actually, when it heats up to it says 400, doesn't mean it is 400 degrees or whatever it is. But it tends to take a while. Maybe the tip as well. I use like a pointy tip because I don't want to melt the rest of the car, but you need heat transfer very quickly for the solder. And also the solder, you know, I'm using like cheap, I found it in the bin solder, you know, I, I have ordered some leaded solder, which 
I know it's better, but I've done it now, so, and I haven't got the other one, so it doesn't really matter. But let me just move the camera, show you what I've done. So the, the wiring went from the speed controller, it went round there. I've just made a more direct route to here. Um, it's quite flexible. I still think it's going to hit the body though, uh, which I know it will hit the body. It's going to hit the body and it's going to push down on here. I don't know whether I should, I might have to move that again and I've cut that now. <laughs> so if it has, if it's got to go somewhere else, but not there, um, I could take it all off. Anyway, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try it yet. I, uh, that took me ages to put that on there because of my bloody soldering. But anyway, any pressure down that's going to put this pod down, isn't it? Any pressure there at all. I did, I've only just thought of that. Anyway, <laughs> forget it. I'm going to onwards and upwards. Prepare the shell. Um, I've got, I've got a ream, another hole for the antenna. I know a lot of people run antennaless, but I have not come across them yet. I've also noticed that some of these, I know that the actual, uh, the, the coax inside, I guess it is, doesn't come all the way up. So, I don't know, about here. Maybe a bit higher. I have trimmed this, but I've seen some of these get bent over so that they run inside the shell. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Not yet. So I'm going to try and get this shell trimmed, repaired, painted. I say trimmed, there's something that's a bit split. Uh, there's some bits and pieces which have chafed the tire, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm more concerned about that now, but uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Let me sort this um, shell out. Shell's pretty much ready for paint scaled it off a little bit all i've got to do is alcohol wipe it put over a, uh, a nice couple of light coats of this um, fluorescent red and then strengthen up the front a little bit more which i'll show you and that'll be that um, one of those fell out of the car just a minute ago didn't know it had gone lucky i found it or the spring fell out. I think the insert, I've got to look at that. I don't think it should be that loose in there, in the carbon fiber, I'm not too sure. The other one's in there, but hmm. anyway, this is more about this. On all days, it won't be done yet. So it'll be d days rather than minutes. But I'll see you in a minute. Right, so not the bodywork as planned. Uh, I think, not a lot of point me filming that it's going to be it's a body shell isn't it you've I've painted it once you don't need to see it again so to finish up I'm going to finish this video part two part two of my race prep um a February meeting at Eastbourne um so I've done quite a bit just to recap cleaned it all out um I've redone the wiring found out my soldering iron's not hot enough well, it is if I set it to the right temperature. So that that works really well. I've shortened the lead on there. Not that I think I would get anything wrong, but uh, yep. Anyway, that's that done. Um, I, I've weighed it. I've done the tires. I've turned them down. There's a video on that anyway, part one. So what I, the next bit I did is a bit of a faff actually. Um, the carbon fiber, which is here, the carbon, what is that? That's a carbon fiber rear brace. Um, the side springs for the pod are under there. So to sort of dampen the sock, well, not to dampen it, because you've got dampers, haven't they? But the springs under there, which are stock. I haven't changed them. I have a set of tuning springs, but what's in there is what came out of the kit. So I don't quite know what spring regs in they are, but. Anyhow, what, what happened was that I this, I looked at it a minute ago, like, I don't know, about half hour ago, I was doing something, and the spring had gone. 
And I thought, I'm pretty sure that was in there before. I didn't even know it had fallen out. Anyway, I found it, it was on the carpet, which was lucky. And unbeknown to me, the insert, the, this is a brass insert. Um, if I can show you, I will. Let me just move the camera. So can you see that's just underneath the damp damper that that there, that pushes in and there's a cone on the bottom of that and that's held on with a grub screw which is just there and that cone the top of the coned spring even the top of it clips in it's sort of like a little recess underneath so what in effect should happen is the spring should be held on that cone it doesn't go anywhere that's there but unbeknown to me in my wisdom the grub screw on top just holds the cone in place I inadvertently, a while ago now, before I raced at the BRCA, uh, watched a video of some guy talking about his x-ray. What was I thinking? And he did a nice little adjustment on there, that on the x-ray, there's an adjustment screw, which, you know, you can screw it down, it tensions that spring up. That's how I thought it was. he was showing. And I thought to myself, that's a good idea. I've got them grub screws. I'll adjust my springs with them. But, well, cut a long story short, that's not what they're for. They just hold the cone in place. So I've been turning that grub screw and what's happened, it's actually turned the brass insert in the carbon fiber. So you can guess what's happened. The brass insert has come loose. So I was turning the grub screw and it was just spinning in the carbon fiber. It's supposed to be a press fit. The thre it's a threaded insert. Brass is the uh, it's a kit, standard kit version. So get, I was getting that, I didn't realize that. I was trying to get the spring in and it was, it's faffing about. It's quite difficult, but anyway, end of the day, what I did, I took this carbon fiber rear brace off completely. I super glued that brass insert in reinserted the cone, put the grub screw in, done it up tight-ish, um, clipped the springs back on so they sort of hang on that underneath, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, it's done. Um, what I have done, I've ordered another um, carbon fibre brace with some upgraded aluminium inserts, and I think whether I need to or not, probably not, but I'll do it anyway, um, I'm going to get another one of these built up, but if I get another one uh, with the upgraded bits and pieces on it, it'll just be a quick swap. Uh, so I can change springs, put that back on and go out. I think it's a lot easier changing the unit rather than trying to faff around trying to get them springs out because they clip on and you can't get your fingers under, well I can't, get your fingers under there to clip the springs back on the, um, I don't know what they're called, they're called a, uh, it's a cone, you know, it's a cone thing that the springs clip on. If you know what you, if you've seen a shoe map, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I just find it, I think it'll be a lot easier just putting one of these on complete. Anyway, I haven't got one yet. It's on order. Blah, de blah, de blah. Now the next thing to do, which I'm not going to film, but I'm looking forward to doing it, is reusing my setup gauges. Uh, where I can put these on. I had them on the wrong holes, apparently, because uh, it was dragging. I'm going to argue that case. I don't know, but I'd be like to be proven otherwise, because it's um, when I was doing my front caster quite fit properly onto the on the uh, the gauge that I was using. But apparently, someone watched my video. Who was it? I'm, I'm rubbish. Is it you, Lewis? I can't remember. Um, was it Drift Craze? Well, I can't remember now. But I had the axles on the wrong, on the wrong bits, apparently. Um, I'm going to try and change that anyway. Anyway, that's it. I'm rambling because I'm sort of thinking ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going to do a part three. It's when it's almost done, ready to run, and off we go. If I change anything between now and then, that's when I'll update might do a little bit of um, of my MTR hand controller, incorporate that with the next video. Can't really do a proper hand controller 
review or feedback until I've actually used it. So, but I have found out some good tips with the MTR, the Sandby MTR. Um, and there's a lot, there's a lot more to it than just, it's, it's very much like ra my radio link. My radio link is very similar, I have to say. But that's it for now. That will end part two. I've got other bits and pieces still coming along for the car. So I will do a part three, which will lead up to the 19th of February when I take for my, it's a Sunday, and I'll take another trip down to uh, Roberts, Roberts Bridge Community College for the, it's a winter round. I'm the only one booked in at the moment, but it's, there are other rounds and other venues booked way before that one. So I'm guessing people will eventually get around to booking in. It's matter to me that that actual meeting, which is a Sunday afternoon, I think it runs from nine to about two, does it? I think, could be wrong, but that'll do me a bit of practice. Um, the only other thing I've done on here, let me just quickly show you and the Liberty I'm putting on there so that I know what I'm running. So we've got a 1.5 degree camber, nearly said caster, camber, that's standard. I think, well, I believe that's stock. There's no reason why that shouldn't change. These side rails, they're standard, 2.5 millimeter. So I've put that on there and I've, I've weighed that servo. So the only other change that I might show you is if I get a servo, an aluminium servo, but lighter, uh, that could be the way forward. Anyway, that's it now for part two. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're finding this, I hope you're finding this interesting. Come along on my journey through the LMP12 um, RC carpet racer scene, of which, as you can probably gather, I don't know a huge amount. There's so much to know, it's overwhelmingly too much. But I do take on board tips and what people tell me what I should or shouldn't do until I find out for myself what works, what doesn't work. Um, and hopefully over the course of the next 12 months, you should see an improvement. Ho yeah, it's, it's certainly uh, an eye opener. Anyway, that's the end of part two of my race prep. Um, I'd like you to please like, subscribe, and follow, and also spread the word, share the video. So it's not just this, all sorts of RC interest me. Anyhow, that's it. Part two is done, and I'll see you soon for part three. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.